Christmas ought to have been the ideal opportunity to get to know the TTRS a little better, but in recollection it feels like I spent most of the time fussing with settings and screens and other peripheral nonsense. Some of this fumbling was inevitable, of course, like any other expensive German car, the RS is only slightly less adjustable than a temper mattress. Long gone are the days when getting the seat and steering wheel in the right place was the bulk of the job. I spend about a million times longer simply concerning myself with whether I want the seat to default to either the first or second of its three heat settings. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. In the TT, Audi's devotion to its virtual cockpit system is total. The decision to sacrifice the additional pop-up screen on the center stack, as you'd find in the current RS3, is mostly about accommodating the swoopy dashboard and its trademark vents. And as good as the instrument cluster-based 12.3 inches display is, it does take some getting used to, especially if you've become accustomed to fiddling with the infotainment system by means of the dial that lives beneath your left elbow. I suspect the omnipresence of such controllers is the reason why Ingolstadt has retained one because it is almost redundant on the TT, the steering wheel mounted buttons offering all the functionality you really need. The upshot is that you very rarely find your eyeballs moving further south than the middle of the steering wheel, which is plainly to the benefit of your general road awareness. It does, however, mean that, if you're me, you rather obsess about what's on the screen in front of you. Audi will let you choose between two basic displays, one that relegates the rev counter and speedometer in favor of the infotainment system and one that puts an oversized rev counter front and center and sidelines any other media to the left-hand portion of the screen. The latter seems the more natural choice for the RS, but selecting it means putting up with two dials that incessantly chart the engine's power and torque output as a roving percentage. As ever, this is the kind of readout that makes interesting viewing for about a nanosecond, and thereafter serves only as a distraction. And unlike the left side, which allows you to scroll through the available options, the right is as immutable as a teletext page. The only solution is to have a destination constantly running on the sat-nav, which replaces both meters with on-screen directions, but when the destination is mostly my folks' house on Christmas Day, this is far too tedious. So instead I've spent the last few weeks staring at a real-time graph of what my right foot is doing.